Howdy folks, and welcome to part 5.3 of my comprehensive guide to PFSense 2.3. In this section, I want to talk about um, configuration, in particular, uh, backing up and restoring your PFSense configuration. The P all, basically, everything in the user interface, every setting that is accessible via the user interface uh, is stored in a file, uh, which is generally called config.xml. That's kind of what I refer to it as. This is just a text file, and it contains everything uh, that's accessible from the UI and a couple of other things, which I'll also talk about. The, this is basically your router, um, and all you need is that config file, and you have basically everything. So the reason why I, I mention this is because you should be taking backups of your configuration on a regular basis, because these are so incredibly critical, because it's going to take you pretty decent amount of time to configure your PFSense box to the way you want it. And there's going to be all sorts of little tiny config changes you're going to be making. And you're going to get it exactly the way you want it. And it's going to take a long time and a lot of work. And if that router were to, the hardware were to crap out, um, you want to be able um, to you know have a copy of all that configuration data. And the PFSense um, backup and restore feature is really, really good. Um, if you've ever used Backup and Restore on those consumer grade wireless routers, generally it's kind of flaky. Sometimes settings don't really stick and don't really work properly. Uh, the PFSense uh, configuration system is really well done and uh, it's, it, it's, it's pretty much the best I've ever seen and it really does restore everything. Um, and just to give you an example, my previous router, um, the motherboard failed. So I hacked together a bunch of other hardware, installed PFSense on it with a USB flash drive. All I did was went to the UI, did no configuration whatsoever, and just selected the config file from my, uh, from my backup that I'd made, clicked restore, and the device rebooted, and it was an exact clone of my original router. Pretty much exactly. The only difference was the network card MAC addresses were different because it had different different, different hardware, of course. Um, but other than that, it was identical. And that's the beauty of the PFSense backup system. So first of all, um, to do with the back, what, what data is actually backed up. So uh, I originally said that everything, um, everything accessible within the user interface can be backed up. And so by selecting all, um, that basically means everything. But you can generate specific backups for the specific services if you want to just backup and restore config for a specific service. You can do that. Um, not only uh, is all of the, basically all the built-in stuff backed up, but uh, all the package configuration is also backed up. So if you install packages um, like NTOP, Squid, whatever, their config will also be uh, stored as well. Uh, you can disable that if you wish, um, but uh, generally speaking, you want that as well. Previously, um, I don't exactly know what version it changed in, uh, but it used to be that when you restored uh, a config on a system, uh, it would restore all of the package configuration, but it wouldn't actually reinstall the package. So if I had Squid installed, for example, it would, uh, you know, it would give all of the uh, the actual config for squid but it wouldn't actually reinstall squid so you'd have to manually go into the you know the, the package selection uh, and actually install it but uh, now um, with pfsense 2.2 and 2.3 uh, it will automatically reinstall a package for you so that uh, that is now taken care of the other thing that you can include is bat is uh, rrd backup data. So all of the data that generates the RRD graphs, those databases, you can put those in the actual um, config.xml file as well. Now, by default, they say don't do this. Um, I disagree with this. Um, I think that this should always be backed up as well because, I mean, it's only four megabytes. Only, and if you enable all the graphs, um, it can 
go up to maybe six megabytes, but I mean, six megabytes is really nothing for a configuration file. Um, and the thing is, by unchecking that box and actually including all the RRD graphs, not only does all of your config data make it over to you know your restored system, but all of the history of all of the you know the system, um, the traffic, all that stuff, that all makes it as well. So it really does clone the system basically. Um, so I always back up RRD data as well. But um, if you want your config file to just be you know a couple kilobytes of just pure text, um, you can you can disable that. But generally, I like to keep that enabled. So that way, you know my network history persists from uh, machine to machine. You can also encrypt the config file, but generally speaking, um, I don't uh, I don't find that to be terribly useful. And all you got to do is just click download configuration, and there you go. It generates the config and it puts the the basically the time and date stamp on the end of the uh, the file name, so you know exactly when the config was uh, taken. And the reason why I suggest um, backing this up is because you never know when something bad is going to happen. I mean, if you have a hard drive, for example, in your PFSense router, which most people are going to have, I mean, some people are going to be on SSDs and USB keys and all sorts of stuff like that, but that storage media could fail, right? That hard drive could crap out on you. And when it does, it can take all of your config with you. So generally speaking, I will make a backup um, every single time I make a config change. I mean, literally, you just click the button. I mean, it's backed up, it's that easy. So there's really no harm in doing this. Every time I make a config change, I make a backup. So that way, if anything goes wrong, I can restore it to at least you know, that state. And uh, if I don't make a config change within about a month, I'll usually just make a backup just for the sake of getting the, uh, the RRD graph information. Um, you know, so that the maximum I lose is a month worth of history data. Restoring, like I said, really easy. You just select the file and uh, restore the config. And of course, you have, to, you have to tell it that it's encrypted if it is encrypted. It can't figure that out on its own, which is kind of odd, but anyway. The other thing you can see is you can see the, uh, the configuration history um, of your uh, system. So um, you can actually do a diff um, on the history uh, and you can actually see you know, what has been changed when. Um, and you can, I mean, I mean this, is, this is a really powerful way of seeing what's going on. You can actually uh, download the configuration at different times in the past um, if you uh, want to sort of restore the configuration um, to a particular uh, time uh, or clone the system based on the configuration as it was at a certain time, uh, you can do that. Um, so I generally will always back things up on a regular basis. If you, um, if you don't back up the system and it, something goes wrong and the hard drive doesn't die, so let's say it's not a hard drive failure and you don't have a current backup of the config.xml, what you can do, um, if you remember in the installer, um, it gives you the option uh, of press I to install, press R to perform recovery. And when you press R, what you're effectively doing is it, it will, the LiveC will boot up and it will attempt to rescue the, uh, the config.xml file from a broken installation. So then you can then uh, reinstall PFSense and um, just basically restore the config and your system is back up and running. So. Um, Generally speaking, if you want to avoid heartache and losing all of your settings uh, and history, um, take backups, do it as often as you can. They really don't take up that much space. Um, and I mean, even if they're like six megs and that's a lot for you, you don't have to keep every config you've ever done. You only need to keep the last couple. So, um, you know, and there are, uh, I believe there is a package uh, that actually does this automatically. Yeah, auto config backup. And there is a package out there that will automatically on a schedule um, do backup for you. So uh, you don't even have to remember to do it. Uh, I just, I can't stress enough how important uh, the backup and restore system in PFSense is. It's so useful. I mean, it's also possible that you can completely destroy your system by doing something. I mean, it's unlikely, but it's possible that you could do something horrible to it and have to restore the configuration because it's not easy to revert the changes you made. So you never know when you're gonna need it. Um, and the, the config system is just so well done that uh, there's really no reason not to use it all the time. So uh, anyway, uh, until the next video, 
Thanks for watching.